I'd like to show you today how the magic square of 4x4 contains a lot of wisdom and knowledge embedded in the numbers. This is a wooden puzzle that was famous in the early 1920s showing how the magic square of 4x4 four four could be rearranged with 16 blocks. If I was to pull one out, you'll see, for example, that these can come out and be moved around. So this was called the boss puzzle. So what I'd like to show you is how did this magic square of four by four get created from what we call consecutive numbers? So when I say consecutive, I'm going one, two, three, four. So I'm just writing the, the numbers in order, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. You can see I deliberately went very light on some of these numbers. What's gonna happen is that this is called a natural square. It does not, it's not magic because the columns and the rows do not add up to the same number, 34. So I'm going to show you one step, which is called the reversing of the diagonals. And just by reversing this main diagonal and that main diagonal, something happens to this box of numbers of a natural square. It suddenly becomes magic. And by magic, we mean it rings a bell. So I'm going to reverse. Let's take a note of this diagonal. It's 1, 6, 11, 16. 1, 6, 11, 16. I'm going to rub that out and reverse it. So when I said 1, 6, 11, 16, um, I might even write it in pink here. 1, 6, 11, 16. So I reversed it. Now we take a mental note of the other diagonal. 4, 7, 10, 13. 4, 7, 10, 13. I'm going to rub them, rub them out. 4, 7, 10, 13. And I'm going to write it in reverse. 4, 7, 10, 13. So suddenly, voila, we have what we call a magic square. And it's magic because the, when we had the first diagonals, when it was natural square, 1, 2, 3, 4, the sum of the two diagonals of the natural square already added up to 34. It was the only thing that added up to 34. But now we've got more things that add up to 34. We've got the four columns that up to 34. We've got the four horizontal rows that up to 34. We've got the four center numbers that up to 34. We've got the, the, four, the four corners add up to 34. And even the four quadrants. So when I say a quadrant, that's a two by two subcell. So, so these four numbers here and those four add up to 34, 34, 34. And also we've even got the opposite pairs. So two and three, 14 and 15 are opposite pairs, opposite pairs. And it's just quite amazing that um, it, 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 it's suddenly, what, that's why we call it a harmonic, because it, it, there's an equality there. And it's fascinated cultures for thousands of years. This magic square of 4x4 four four, um, appeared in some, a book from 1917. So 100 years ago, the book that launched me into magic squares came from this book here called Magic Squares and Cubes by W.S. Andrews. And this was kind of like my Bible. Um, I'll just show you a few things. You can see here, one second, I'll just put my glasses on. You can see here, there's um, there's the magic square that we're working with here. Um, and then it's a very old book. It's We can see magic squares of um, what's, what's inside these numbers in the larger squares. Then we can see here how magic squares can be created by lattices, that's a five by five. It's another one. Magic squares looking like um, cymatic, so it's called the Chladni plates. We've got magic squares by Dura, where magic squares appeared at the bottom of um, a lithograph by Dura. Albrecht Dura is called Melancholy. So 1514 would have been written just like we've got 1415 here. His particular square, 1514, was the year that Dura created this uh, lithograph. Then we got a magic square calendar, black and white, 364 days. It's the number 365 is in the middle. So this is a 27 by 27 magic square that is an absolutely rare and beautiful calendar. Then we've got, ma then we've got magic squares 
of six by six. That's a cube. They're the six uh, squares that make up the cube, like a Rubik's cube. And then we have other things like this magic spheres where all the rings add up to the same number. We've got magic stars here, all sorts of sort of combinations. And um, this book completely fascinated me. It's, um, it's almost, it's been, it's really the Bible in my life. It's taught me so much stuff. We've even got um, a larger squares of 16 by 16 and it goes on and on. So I just wanted to say that this was the book that um, when it was given to me as a birthday present when I was around 27 years of age, it completely um, gave me lots and lots of incredible insights into atomic structure. So the pattern that this makes without what happens later on is that we, we get the children to join a line from one to two to three to four to five to six to seven where and to eight and to nine and to 10, and then to 11, so across here, 11, 12's across there. We're looking for order amongst the chaos, 14, 15. And when we get to 16, we join the, the omega to the beginning alpha. So this is a basic pattern, and it was first done in um, this book here. So I wrote, um, so what, what we normally do is we're gonna take away the numbers and just put dots for the center of every cell in the second part of this video, we're going to put 16 dots that represent those 16 numbers. And I'm going to show you something special called the odds versus the evens inside those numbers. So just a little bit more um, to just to show you where this magic square came from. So I wrote this book called The Book of Harmony Squares in 1990. So this is 30 years ago. And what, I, what I'm showing you now is this is a handwritten book. It's called Introducing a Magic Square of 4x4 known as the magic square of Jupiter. So there's the numbers, they've been reversed. And I might put this down and then we can see here, I'll just flip through a few pages. That's the pattern that I just drew here. So the, the pattern I drew there, if you took away the frame, we've tiled the magic square here. Um, we've, um, and here we're gonna rotate the same pattern. And when we rotate the pattern, we get um, certain patterns. Um, that we get this pattern here when we rotate it and we can do it four times eight times So when we rotate it four times we get a more exquisite mandala where the rings start appearing And but the, the, the worksheet that we're going to do next is we're going to explore the difference between when you join the odds and the evens in part two So yeah, so that's the story here and um, What I've done with the patterns is that when we draw the magic square they look like this here so these are, this one's called a decal and that's a sticker and these are adhesive glass transparencies. This was the original one I did in 1990, a long time ago. I put this information out there with all the knowledge on how children can create harmonic magic squares. And when they peel this off, because it's a decal, which is a clear adhesive, you can see that it makes what we call um, a medicine shield. So it's sacred mathematics. It's put on glass, so you can see that it kind of rings a bell. And, and you can put your crystals and feathers and things of importance to you and hang it up. So when we use these sacred harmonic numbers, it's called a space clearing device. So, um, and I believe they, the, the frequency of 34, the sum of what the magic square adds, adds up to, is also what we call a hertz, the cycles per second. So this is the future in medicine sound healing based on sacred mathematics so i just wanted you to know that there's um a whole doorway of knowledge opens up when we get the children exploring mathematics we our job in the 108 academy is to make sure that kids get excited by mathematics so i put together um a my first book again about 30 years ago that join the dots shows how the magic square from tibet those nine numbers, because number nine is the key, when you join one, two, three, we're looking for order amongst the chaos and it creates this pattern here that's done eight times. Whereas this pattern here, the logo for Jane Mathematics is the eight pointed star here. And, and this lesson that I'm just about to do now, Odds and Evens was also published in this. Okay, so um, I hope you enjoyed this stream of knowledge and we're gonna do part two now.